Hello my dear students. Welcome to my channel Pharmacypedia. In this session we are going to learn about another chemical property in the pre-formulation studies. In this session we are going to study about the racemization. So let us first try to figure out what is a racemization. So like racemization is the process of conversion of one isomer form to another isomer form. So now both these forms may have different chemical and physical properties. They may have the different pharmacokinetic as well as the different pharmacological properties. So in another words, we can say that it is the basically conversion of one optically active drug is converted into its another enantiomer and this process follows the first order kinetics. So like it is uh, racemization in a word in a word in itself means conversion. So simply you can say racemization is the conversion. Now conversion from one optically active form to another optically active form. Now one here by one optically active form we, we mean enantiomers. So it is racemization is the process of conversion of one enantiomer form into another enantiomer form. So like we have studied in the stereochemistry that chiral molecules are there. Now what are chiral molecules? Let us try to understand. Chiral molecules are the substances which are not superimposable, so which differ in their optical characteristics. Now, when we talk uh, uh, about it, we simply means when we uh, take the plane of polarization light, the levorotatory form will rotate the plane of polarization of light to the left. So, this form is known as the L form. L in enantiomeric form is the means left. It will turn the plane of polarization light to the left. Whereas the dextrorotatory form means the when any any enantiomeric form is able to convert is able to rotate the plane of polarization of uh, of light to the right. So L form is represented by the minus form and uh, a D form is basically represented by the plus form. So uh, levorotatory, dextrorotatory. So these two forms are actually non superimposable. So when they are rotated in the three dimensional planes, they are known as enantiomers. So the rate of racemization, that is the rate of conversion from L form to the mixture from D form has been used in a way of dating various biological samples and tissues with slow rates of turnovers and these are widely used in the forensic sciences. This technique is known as amino acid dating. As of now you must have heard about the carbon dating but there is also a technique known as the amino acid dating which can help you uh, by the understanding the racemization process of from L form to the D form. So it is the slow degradation of the amino acids where, whereby you can track the date whereby you can track the dating of the substances. So in simple words we can say racemization is the process of conversion of one pure enantiomeric form to another enantiomeric forms. There are two forms levorotatory forms represented by the minus form which is able to uh, turn the or rotate the plane of polarization light to the left and another form dextrorotatory form where uh, uh, the plane of polarization light is rotated towards the right. D form is represented by the plus sign, L form is represented by the minus sign. So now the when we talk uh, why do we want to study in the pre-formulation studies because when we talk about the physical and chemical properties due to the conversion from one form to another form the chemical properties also becomes different so melting point or boiling point or other properties may be altered when any drug substances undergoes the optical rotation changes the change of one form to another form may actually alter its chemical properties so now it has been found that racemates may have different physical properties from either of the pair enantiomers because of their different intermolecular interactions. So the change from a pure enantiomer to a racemate can change its density, melting point, solubility, heat of fusion, refractive index and its various spectra. So the crystallization of a racemate can result in the separation of plus and minus form that is dextro and levo forms or a single racemic compound. So now my dear students you must understand that the change while undergoing the 
conversion from one pure enantiomeric form to another enantiomeric form may result in the difference of their chemical properties since both the enantiomeric forms may have different chemical properties now what can be the possible changes the possible changes can be the difference in the density melting point solubility heat of fusion refractive index and other spectra so in this image you can see that Uh, the there is the l alanine structure and d alanine structures so they both are non superimposable they both are having the same stereochemistry they are the two different enantiomeric forms similarly you can see our hand is non superimposable you can see the structure whereby you can clearly see one is levorotatory form and another is a dextrorotatory form they are just mirror images of each other but they are not superimposable now let us try to understand the factors which actually influences the racemization process now the racemization process or the conversion in a drug substance is influenced by a number of factors these factors ranges from the change in the temperature or change in the solvent system which may initiate the racemization process or the change in some catalyst or the presence or absence of the light even is known to because it is a optically active compound so even in the presence or absence of the light may initiate the racemization process so the while undergoing the racemization process the formed mixture is known as the racemate so the activity optical activity was first noticed by louis pasteur in 1843 whereby he discovered the optical activity in para tartaric or racemic acid found in the grape vine so he was able to separate the two enantiomeric crystals that rotated the plane polarized in the opposite directions now the how we can form the racemic mixtures also now you my dear students you can understand that the two enantiomeric forms are different levo forms have different physical and chemical properties dextro rotatory forms have different chemical properties now in some cases we can utilize or we may need one one for example the levo form is having more therapeutic effect than the dextro form or it may happen that the dextro form may have the more therapeutic activity than the levo form in some cases it has been found that even racemic mixture whereby the two uh, bound where by the same substance in the two optical forms two enantiomeric forms in two mixture forms is found to be uh, is found to have a more therapeutic activity so racemization can be achieved by simply mixing equal quantities of the two pure enantiomers so racemization can also occur in the chemical interconversions for example the r form of 3 phenyl 2 butanone is dissolved in aqueous ethanol that contains sodium hydroxide or hydrochloride and a racemate is formed because there is change in the solvent system so even racemate racemate form may have the more therapeutic activity than individual enantiomeric forms So now let us try to uh, understand the examples. So many psychotropic drugs show differing activities or efficacies between isomers. For example, amphetamine is often dispensed as a racemic salt. Why it is preferred to be in the form of racemic salt? Because it is having more active dextroamphetamine, uh, which is reserved for refractory cases or more severe indications. Another example is methadone. So of which one isomer has activity as an opioid. agonist and the other as an nmd antagonist so these are the classic examples i want all of you to remember at least two to three examples for example i have given you the examples of amphetamine epinephrine the dextro and levo forms have different properties amphetamines have different properties racemic form has different properties methadone drug is having different properties one isomer has an activity against the opioid agonist whereas the other isomer is having the activity as an nmd antagonist let us try to understand few more examples the classic example is thalidomide how come because the r enantiomeric is effective against the morning sickness in, uh, during the pregnancy whereas the s form is teratogenic which may cause birth defects so it is not even recommended to use thalidomide during pregnancy because it may happen that the racemization process takes place in vivo that is after conception also after in vivo once it reaches the blood circulation also so uh, so one only r enantiomer is having efficacy against the morning sickness if inside the body it gets converted to s form which is teratogenic it can harm the fetus 
so this is this drug thalidomide is not prescribed during the pregnancy another commonly used example is the ibuprofen so in ibuprofen uh, which is only anti inflammatory as one enantiomer whereas the other is biologically inert so likewise acetylcholine isomer is much more reactive than the r enantiomer in citalopram another example is the citalopram whereby s enantiomer is having more therapeutic activity as an antidepressants which inhibits the serotonin reuptake so uh, i have given you here three examples thalidomide example then uh, ibuprofen example and also the citalopram examples you can uh, always try to mention 5 to 10 examples whereby you will feel that in some cases r form is more active s form is more active and even in some cases racemic mixture is active because the total optical rotation becomes zero once in a racemic mixture both the both the forms are having opposite direction so they neutralize each other and the overall optical rotation of the mixture becomes zero now what is the significance of studying the racemization studies see racemization now you have understood that one isomer one enantiomeric form is having different chemical properties than the another enantiomeric form one enantiomeric form is having more activity and whereby the other enantiomeric form may be inert or it, it may happen that another form is having more activity so it is very important to understand during the pre formulation studies which enantiomeric form which isomer is having more activity which isomer is having less activity or if it is of use or no and what happens if during the process of uh, uh, actual formulation development one forms get converted to another form because you uh, you have seen that even uh, there are different factors of conversion from one form to another so even the temperature change or the solvent system change or the presence or the absence of the light may trigger the conversion from one form to the another so it is very important to understand during pre formulation studies that the compound is actively active or optically active or not so it would have actually help in the development of the desired dosage forms during the formulation development this data is very much required so racemization study is very important and critical in the pre formulation development thank you so much everyone for watching the video if you have not subscribed to my channel i request you to please subscribe to my channel pharmacypedia for getting further updates i would be sharing further uh, important lecture videos on pre formulation which will actually help you thank you so much again